He is an eight-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier, a two-time Bassmaster winner. She just may be the podcast host that some folks fear the most. Together, they host one of the fastest-growing podcasts in fishing, The Bilge. This week, Chris and Trey Saldane join me on... I'm Bob Cobb from the Bassmaster. Welcome to Mercer. You guys know the drill. Welcome one, welcome all. Friends, family, freeloaders, fishing freaks. You're all welcome here at the Awkwardly Honest Fishing Podcast that goes by my last name, which is Mercer. Welcome in. I hope you are having a great week. Happy Hump Day. I want to thank all our humpers. Do we still have humpers? Let me know in the comments. I mean, it started with humpers. And, and, and well, that, that, that hit a bit of a hump for those of you that were here then. But, I mean, you were humpers because, I mean, it's Wednesday that this podcast comes out. But do we still have humpers or do people not want to be identified as humpers? And if so, do we need to come up with a new name that I can refer to you guys as? Let me know in the comments. Is humpers where we're living? Is that what we're staying? I mean, I don't say it all the time. And every once in a while, I will get a comment from somebody. I don't like being a humper. I mean, I love being a humper. Trust me. Um, take that whatever direction you want. Uh, but let me know what you think you guys should be. But I hope you're all having a great week. It is Wednesday, November 8th. It is officially the time of year where I live when we have to scrape our windshield and stuff in the morning, which sucks. It sucks. I mean, and people say, oh, you like you get the seasons, all four of them. I like three of them. I mean, and I don't mind winter. At, I mean, I love winter during the holidays. It's a beautiful to have snow at Christmas. I love I love snow for skiing. I love snow for for sledding and stuff like that. I just wish it would just stay off the roads and stay off of my car and my driveway and all that sort of stuff. But um, we are scraping our windshields now. Um, and before you know it, I'm sure we will be buried in snow. But... Um, Thank you guys for being here, you guys, you humpers, until further debate happens in the comments. I would thank you all for being here. hope you're having a great week, and um, this week's podcast is going to be a fun one. Um, there's some where you're like, I wonder how this guest will be, that guest. I have no wondering. I think that the biggest problem with this podcast is going to be keeping the rails on, because we are going to go in many, many different directions. And um, this week's guests host one of the fastest growing fishing podcasts there is on the planet called The Bilge, Chris and Trait Zaldane. And um, if you've listened to their show, you know they go all over the place. And uh, that's exactly where this interview goes. So I hope you enjoy it. It's not, a, and, and that being said, I hate that term, an interview, because what I do is not interview people. I mean, to interview people, you write down a bunch of questions and you're like, back on this date, this, no, we just have a conversation and it goes whatever direction. I never have a plan. Um, and that's why sometimes they're long. I get it. We talk about it during this podcast that my podcast, this particular podcast would be a lot more successful if I would just cut it off somewhere. But as I always tell you guys, there's... I don't believe in cutting a good conversation short, and I don't believe in it just because we're recording it. So if you have to break this bad boy into a few little bits, go ahead and do that. I mean, watch half on Wednesday and half on Thursday or Friday, or watch it all at once. Hey, watch it twice. Would you watch it 10 times? That would help me out. Whatever you do, we hope you enjoy this. And um, I always got to do this. Thank you guys for this channel, this show continues to grow. You guys are incredible. You have no idea how much your likes and your comments affect this show and affect the future of this channel. You guys are incredible. And I think this week's show is going to be a lot of fun. So buckle up, get your popcorn ready because we're going to hook up with the build. Chris and Trait Zaldane. Chris and Trait Zeldane, hosts of the Bilge Bassmaster Elite Series Pro Classic. What do I introduce you dudes as? Or not, I guess I not know. dudes, just probably. The, 
I don't know, the fishing couple. Trey doesn't fish as much anymore, but she's equally as effective as I am on the Elite Series as she is on the on the uh, the podcast now. It's been awesome. Bill's yeah. podcast meets uh uh you know Mercer's podcast, and uh, yeah, it's fun. It's all fun. Who doesn't have a podcast nowadays? There's a couple people, but not very many. I mean, I'm no. sure they're working on it. Yeah. Uh, I like your name better, to be honest. I hate <laughs> the name of my podcast because literally the only reason we called it that was because we had a logo. <laughs> Our yeah, production, right. like yeah. we had uh, made a show, a pilot show, WFM wanted to do it one time, which was like an interview show. And this was years ago. Yeah. And obviously you remember how my podcast became a thing. Uh, yeah. It was it was very quick turnaround to create <laughs> that podcast. Um Yep, <laughs> and and they went with Mercer, but I hate it because I'm just like it. Just I mean, it works, I guess, but I just yeah. I I it just sounds weird to say my own name. I don't know. I'm weird that way. <laughs> Zona said when we had Zona on a couple weeks ago, he said he's gonna him and Karen are gonna make one. It's gonna be the Errorator. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the weirdest thing about them: like they're they're empty nesters now, so their yep. kids. Yep. You know, they went to school, and now I mean, they're both back in Michigan now. Both their mm -hmm. boys, but but they're empty nesters. And, yep. and I'm like, Z, like I was kind of concerned. Cause I think that's one thing people go through in life that nobody like literally your life's falling apart. Your kids have gone to school <laughs> and, every, and everybody's <laughs> congratulating you. Like nobody's like, Oh, that yeah. has to be tough to go through. Um, <laughs> and I said to Zona, I'm like, what, what do you guys do? Yeah. And he's like, really, you want to know what we do now? Remember this dude has lived on a golf course or beside yes. a golf course. Most of his adult life. Never golf. Has never swung a club. Yeah, you know, <laughs> shoots deer on the golf course and turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> they play freaking digital golf, like video game golf, every night. I'm like, you never golfed, and now you're obsessed with that. So the that's world is so getting funny. very digital, I guess. Dude, that's one of the things that we. And by the way, like the cameras right there, Mercer, your the trade's got the screen set up over there. So I'm looking at your face. There's a camera lens, and then trades over. Yeah, but here. if you look at me. Then you're looking the opposite way of okay. me because the sides. Yeah, right. Okay. So don't so look at me. This way, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's one of the things that we miss. We talked about this the other day is, is uh, man, back we talk and we're on the build set. So we got to bring up kind of the split, like right off the giddy and not oh to take God. control of your of your podcast. But uh, giddy up. I will say straight up, like that is the thing that we miss the most is that golf group that we had. Oh, my gosh. Towards the end, like. 2017 2018 we had the best golf group uh that professional bass fishing has ever seen I think bobby a, lane there's a golf group now yeah that we're not a part of anymore at, you, you gotta look at the <laughs> that we're not a part of anymore uh who but, am i supposed uh, yeah, to look at I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that golf group was was just amazing from, you know, the lanes who who were just hammer sticks to uh you know Justin Lucas and and all of them uh pretty much if you had a Florida zip code you were a part of that golf group and and uh, man that was just so much fun. The camaraderie off the water was so strong. And then little did we know. Happened. Yeah. And then that happened. And now our golf the Elite Series golf group is non-existent. Like no, no there is one. That's what I'm trying to tell oh. you. You stop looking at me. They can't tell that you. She's so bossy on the set. <laughs> of Listen, you're not producing this show, young lady. Exactly. Thank <laughs> you. Stand babe. down. I can't yeah, help stand it. down. <laughs> yeah, I can't help it. <laughs> so what's up? What's been up with you, dude? What's that? So you're just saying before the camera started rolling, it's getting cold there. So less fishing, yeah. obviously. Yeah. 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 Um, fishing is. I mean, it, it fishing will be great on the Great Lakes until it yeah, ices yeah. up. But it is definitely. It's been a weird fall. It was warm yeah. way too late and yeah. um and it's now like this is the week that everybody from the north is like oh it's here like yeah just it's just it's stupid dude like I, it, it's the fact that it doesn't end that drives people crazy because Gosh. i mean when you guys have got snow the odd time that you ever have it's like oh it's beautiful it's snowing like you know yeah. people from arkansas they're like oh, i love the snow yeah i'd love the snow yep. if it left within 24 hours myself but That's um yeah all is good with with me but nobody gives a crap about me they want to hear about you guys and uh, you guys have been very busy yes yes dave and we talk about it all the time it seems like um you know so the professional bass fishermen uh space or landscape seems like it is changing seems like every quarter so like four times a year 
seems like, you know, there's more and more podcasts popping up. Uh, live coverage is, is, is probably the most valuable thing, but what happens when that live coverage stops, you still have to provide value for your sponsors. This nitro shirt I'm wearing, this black rifle hat I'm wearing they, they those companies want to see not only those logos, but your personality and just engagement uh, in that off season. And matter of fact, we had Matt Pangrak over here last night with his, uh, with his, his, uh, his, his, his loving girlfriend, Courtney, she's, she's awesome. in the background. That she's awesome. Yeah, yeah, she's a Texas. Or I don't know what California. she's doing with Panger, but she is awesome. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> at the end of my, at the end of the show, I asked Pangrek for some some relationship advice to give to the viewers. He's like, uh, 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 uh. I thought you were going to ask me about just general life advice, so I have that <laughs> in the can, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. Uh, yeah, Courtney was awesome. They they both came over last night, and uh, we just had that same conversation where, and he's doing a really good job. At, you're doing a really good job at it. Um, of just kind of being well-rounded and delivering what, what the fans want to hear and see these days, you know, with the popularity of podcasts and, and, uh, and things, the biggest thing. And, and she reminds me constantly, just, just be as genuine as possible. Um, it seems Real. like that, that, yeah, that hard sell that I grew up watching and listening to and, uh, you know, and, and almost shoved down my throat, that hard sell of, Oh, here's the, this crankbait, it's this is the best crankbait because X, Y, Z, you know, it's more like, okay, cool. Let's go, let's go out and have a little fun with this crankbait and try to catch a eight pound Texas hog on it and let it sell itself type thing. Uh, that's just a small example of like what, you know, kind of where we're at. And, uh, you know, when the elite series schedule ends, uh, and I've had a terrible season this year, uh, you know, we just want to stay busy, stay engaged. And that's what provides value um, to, to all the, the partners involved. Now that's a very professional way yeah, of saying that. No, I'm, I'm not professional, trust me, whatsoever. I'm You're actually right, an absolute mess. We're talking about being authentic, and he's like, yeah, yeah he just I just gave a whole yeah. like perfect spill, Dave. And know? that's why she keeps me Goodness in line. Yeah. yeah. Trey, why did you guys start a podcast? There you go, Dave. Thank you. Uh, I don't even. To be honest, I don't remember. It was like um, a, we. I started throwing it around a year before we even. Yeah did it and um and then the whole question was like how can we be different so it was that was a hard thing to figure out because i didn't want us doing what everyone else was doing mm. the space had people doing it so then the rv component came into my mind and battle born like dominates the rv side when it comes to batteries so i kind of um threw that around with the guy who at the time was their cmo and um, he was like, I'm all for it. He's like, I think y'all would be great at it. Let's get you in an RV so you can do this. And that's how it came about. And then the RV process took a long time. So we had months and months before we got that. So it was just, it it started the idea way before it even came to fruition. But I don't remember the exact moment when I was like, we need to do one. I watch podcasts. I watch Rogan yeah. a lot, obviously Huberman. I love Huberman. Way before Huberman was cool, I feel like you know everyone watches him now. Um, I watched Does that make him Boys. less cool to you? <laughs> no, but I, I think like now people are like, yeah, you know, like it's like a cool thing to say. I watch Huberman now, and I was geeking out on that stuff way before anyone else cared. Dave, are you a big podcast guy? Like, do you, oh I yeah, mean, do you watch? Are you really? I, I'm not. Too. Yeah. For many, many years. Yeah. And it wow. started probably with Rogan. And yeah, uh, I watch uh, Two Bears, One Cave, uh, yeah. Your yeah. Mom's House, Theo Vaughn's podcast. Uh, yeah. yeah. A bunch of those, like a lot of comedy stuff. But but I, don't, I think all podcasts in general, like the ones that I like, there isn't like us being pigeonholed as a fishing podcast, which is obviously what we both are. But right. I think if you watch a pot, it's so much like, I mean, I don't think I've ever asked anybody how many strands of skirt right. do they like on their jig. It's or, just a conversation. Right. Yeah. That and, and, it, and it goes many different directions. Right. Right. You, you so, know what? You, yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I was just saying this, this, this has something to do with it too. Like this whole podcasting thing and asking the right questions that are both interesting or entertaining or both. Uh, to your guest, I, that right there is an art, and you, Dave, are very good at it. And where it really shines is when you're on that classic stage or when you're on that elite series stage, and there's an awkward silence. You are so swift 
to like ask a pertinent question or a, a entertaining question. Whereas like on, on our set, it's like, okay, if there's an awkward silence, I'm like, uh, to, uh, uh, I like repeat I myself. I think it's more of just like having a genuine curiosity about that person yeah. or learning yeah. and you can't fake that. And it, if, if a listener really cares, they can tell right away, okay, these are just lined up questions. Yeah. They, they didn't even look into their guests. They don't have that relationship with their guests. They don't really care about the subject. I think that's why Joe Rogan does so well, right? Yeah. Because he's a book of knowledge, whether it's all correct. I don't know, but I don't care. He's like a sponge. And so he can go on these tangents with these guests because he actually is interested in what they're talking about and wants to learn more. And I think that maybe um, our space was missing that just a hair because it was so hyper-focused on just the fishing. Not not talking about you, Dave. I'm just take, talking about like in the beginning, it just seemed like everything was only about the tournament. Like you said, in the strands on a jet, you know, like things that, yes, yeah. those are great, but we have Bassmaster covering that stuff. Like people want to know these anglers, especially in 23 when that's really what moves a lot of product you've seen you've seen the communities these youtubers have built and they've built them based on their personality and people genuinely like caring for them and almost feeling like they're friends with them even yeah. though they maybe never met them and so it's a whole different environment um and and that's really what i felt like is fishing at, when I first started thinking about a podcast, fishing hadn't taken that step yet, you know, and, and peeled the curtain back and, and opened up, you know. The, to... the, yeah, the term like subscriber, right? So, okay, we're looking for subs. It's not what you would think. It's not like that. Hit that subscribe button and subscribe. Like you, you want people to subscribe to like your life. Like what, what's going? What what's our yeah. dog Nebo doing? Right, right. What's Leica? What's Michi doing? You know, what kind of hunting are we doing this week? Like. I, and we love sharing that kind of thing. So like the term so hit that sub button, it's more than just hitting a button. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's being a part of our personal life. And, and that's, that's really the whole key. Um, and, you know, and I see some of these guys who are just awesome fishermen, just, just bang up fishermen, a plus, you know, uh, top 10 guys all year long, but like, it just sucks to see some of these guys personalities just don't kind of mat don't have that kind they're nice guys just don't have that inviting personality. And it seems like nowadays just having that well-rounded, uh, you know, the, the fishing skill as well as that inviting personality is, is really the ticket. So that's kind of what we strive for. Yeah. I think people want to connect with you on a personal level. I, and I always say, you've heard me say it in meetings a lot yes. of times with anglers, Yes, give them a reason to cheer for you other than where yeah. you're from. I mean, they, yep. they, of course, if we go out west, they're going to cheer for you. Of course, when we're in Texas, they're going to cheer for you. Of course, they're going to cheer for the Johnsons in Canada. But yep. when you've really made it is when they have a reason. To, but and that only happens by I, I think that's the coolest thing that the Internet actually has done in our lifetime. Yes. Literally, it has yes. taken. I mean, I'm older than you guys, obviously, but. But if you look at even in in, in your lives, like it is mm -hmm. literally taken it because at one time, corporations were in charge of whose voice you heard. And, yes, and, yes. and it doesn't matter how much sense you made or whatever. And now it's a time when literally you can't be fake. And if you try Open to be floor. fake, you're going to get busted. I mean, yep. by somebody. Yeah. And and yep. I also think that must be exhausting to, to, <laughs> yeah. to be, you act, know, there's, there's yeah. sides of everybody that not everybody sees. And you don't sure. need to see all the sides. But genuinely. To, it, yeah, you to control know, the narrative. Yeah. Almost, right. I see yeah. it a lot in fishing where I'm like, where I know, and I don't show every side of me, but I, I, I show the crazy side enough that people know I'm probably really crazy behind the scenes. If you don't follow her on Twitter, you okay. don't know it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, there are some guys that I'm like, man, they really control that narrative. You know, I know them outside of this, you know, and, and to me, that has to be a job, you know, like if you are molding yourself, like curating like this perfect look. And things aren't necessarily that I'm like, that's tough. And by the way, Dave, you mentioned that, um, you know, kind of that speech you give and a lot of people don't hear this. I wish someone would record it. Um, before every Bassmaster classic, we kind of do the walkthrough of, okay, here's the stage, you know, here's where you're going to enter. Here's where you take your first steps. This is where you place your fish. This is where, you know, we're going to weigh, weigh the fish in. 
but like at the end of that kind of that that run through you always give that that meeting that speech of exactly what you said make sure you express yourself as your brand and don't fake don't be an actor about it and every single time whether it's a classic or that 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 start of the year elite series meeting and you give that speech or the redfish uh, cup you know you'd give the same speech to them as well you know, and bringing and really hitting that point home of, you know, being yourself, obviously, um, you know, being on this side of that stage as you're speaking to us, you really feel that tension, like, like really just kind of ease up a little bit. And and you're very, very good at that and of allowing and kind of encouraging guys to step up and just be, be themselves. And, and really that's, that's huge. I mean, that is huge. Um, but yeah, that, that, um, that uh, that speech you give every year very very impactful and it it really does help guys through it because i'm sitting next to them and you start to feel them like you know they start they just nod their head like yeah okay dave you're giving me confidence to be myself and that's what it's all about well i honestly think that like if you look at anything that's been really successful in the mm-hmm. last decade for the most part almost all of it goes back to like just in our industry alone let's yeah. take somebody who's seth fighter yeah he's real you know, yeah. Matt Robertson, there's a lot more show to it, but he's yes. real. Yeah. Gerald right. Swindle, I mean, has always been good on the mic Successful. and been able to do that. But I would say Gerald Swindle is more real today than he's yeah. ever been. You know, he ever doesn't has. just, it's not just Larry the Cable Guy. You know what I mean? Yes. And, this, yes. and, and but that's what people relate with, in my opinion. You yeah. guys no, you, are yeah. very you gotta, real, I think. Yeah. In, in, you got to sacrifice. Go yeah, you got to sacrifice, awesome. uh, you know, other people's opinions of you, or sometimes even sacrifice sponsor dollars to be yourself. That is your brand. You're either going to invest and subscribe in your brand or not, and 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 that's just how it has to be. Something but like you said, being exhausting. I mean, if you put on an act facade, that is very exhausting because I've been there the first couple of years of my career trying to put on this act, and it should not be that way. I think too. Um when you aren't yourself like we were talking about earlier people definitely catch on but well i lost my train of thought sorry about that <laughs> i had funny. it and then he kept talking and it you know, that happen a lot Trey, with chris yeah yeah that's why i try and cut him off because i know if i don't then i'm <laughs> it's gone <laughs> but well, yeah that one went That'll come back. But speaking of getting being real, did you guys have a few moments? I mean, I, I know there's things that get talked about and things that we've released where, where I, you know, you hit send, <laughs> whether it be, you know, like you po- publish that show and you're like, oh boy, this is yeah. going to be interesting to see how people I, did. Was I there did... things you guys like, have yeah. you gotten more? gutsy as it's gone on the first one must have been a little tougher i would imagine the tough really they weren't too tough until the zona one because we knew we were going places that were still raw with us and so you never know how people are going to take that um and then obviously the other side who didn't even speak to us until now after that you know all of a sudden they want to talk um that one scared me, but it was true, so it shouldn't scare you, you know? Um, but I'll say the one we did with Pangrat last night, we talked about Wheeler, and and I just lay out how I, how I feel about certain things. And so when you put yourself out there and you talk about something, especially in my case, I don't have the accolades. So it's really easy for someone to say, she can't fish, she needs to yeah. shut up, right? That's super easy, but to invalidate everything else I know and, and how I take things that that's tough. You know, like, I feel like people are allowed to have their opinions, even if they don't have accolades and that it should be okay for me to have an opinion about someone and to be able to express that opinion and people not agree with it or vice versa. And and I think in our industry, we've cultivated this everything when I, especially when I first got around, everything was so buttoned up and no one could, no one could step out the line and be themselves or have an issue with a product because if they burned the bridge over there, then 
everyone was so afraid everyone yeah. needed still to this day needs sponsorship so they won't say how they truly feel um and i think you know that part of who i am is i don't give a rip and um and i don't and and now that i'm not fishing i don't have to i don't have sponsors telling me what i can and can't do so i can just talk about it and um so it's not as scary anymore but the pangrack one that we filmed last night you know you just you take that chance giving your opinion on something it's a lot easier not to give your opinion because then oh, yeah. you don't have to worry about people attacking you so but i guess now i don't i don't get as nervous i anymore. think uh and i appreciate it being the you know being a co-host of a, of a podcast being the male i think it's the female thing i think females are genuinely um you know better communicators uh they are uh tougher than us really mentally they really um so like when you know like for example our dogs are going crazy uh for example like i don't know if you caught uh you know the ike live show where you know there were some some pretty tough questions asked of boy duckett after releasing you know one of the biggest announcements in professional fishing these changes that affect a lot of of uh of of anglers you know, like Becky Iaconelli went on there and, and asked pretty tough questions and, 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 uh, a lot of males would not do. So it's, a, it, you know, having that, uh, that strong female presence is, uh, is uh, I, something I appreciate that way. I don't have to ask the tough questions. Chris, you're the one who was all for leaving the dogs in here. So it's, uh, we're dog people. I, I can't even hear the dogs too just much. so you know. Okay, good. Yeah. It sounds oh, a lot a... louder to you guys. Okay. Yeah. It's a hot mess. It's like a war uh, zone right now. Really? Hey, over there. Yeah. Remember, I just got done talking about how mentally tough you couldn't women. hear you. I was listening to the dogs. Block it out. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys classify your podcast as a conflict based podcast? It I... seems to be from the outside, that's what it feels like to me. Like, that's like the, if I look Con at the first Con one with Clun, it was more, but it's definitely steered towards. I think more of just talking about things that no one else talks about and so that kind of ends up being like i guess conflict you know like you have um with john b you know like i wanted to talk because i've had those conversations with googans because i was one of the biggest haters of the googans so having those open conversations there's so many assumptions made by fans and so that's kind of one thing that i wanted to help on well let's help them have the facts and actually hear what's going on. Then they don't make so many assumptions. And so maybe if that, if a lot of that has to do with conflict, I guess. So I feel like as humans, right. Especially in the fishing world, when something happens, you know, week one, you know, week two, we have all these questions that you think about, but don't necessarily ask or can ask. That's where she comes in. She loves asking those types of questions. Whenever I'm out and I come back and traits watching TV, it's typically the Bravo channel where it's women bickering back and forth. But that's what like people Sarah that's watches what, like, that interest crap too. Yeah, it's so it's like, horrible, what, dude. It's terrible, it. but it's I like mean, it's human nature to like get engaged, you know, be engaged with this stuff. And well, just, like, I think well, there's two parts to that, right? I travel with dudes 24 seven, so that's my only estrogen. Like I get that's like my only <laughs> girl time. And then two, like there's a psychology to it. And I pay attention to that. Like what makes me as a viewer tick and things like that. And having like the reality of these marriages out there, you know, you normally don't get to see some of that stuff where you can identify with, oh, okay, like this is normal and stuff like that or things they go through. Um, so he thinks it's all trash, it's but trash. You know, I love it is. It. It's every episode is the same. They're going to take a group of, very wealthy women. They're going to travel yes. to somewhere. This week we're in Aspen, or this week <laughs> yeah. we went to a log cabin yeah. and wherever. The and then they're, the, yeah. they're going to talk. That bitch right there, she says uh -huh. something to me. Like there's going to be a, and it's going to build. It's yep. just like the UFC. They're going to build the excitement. That's and then right. the main event's going to happen at dinner. And then the person's <laughs> going to yell at the other one, and the other one's going to be like, I can't believe you did this to me on my ass. Yeah. <laughs> And then they all make up. I love it. Yep. I love and, it. But there's uh, there's half of our pop human population that love to watch that stuff, you know, and and uh, and kind of trait kind of brings that into the world of fishing. I mean, but again, a lot of the questions she asked, a lot of the things she's interested in, or tweets about, 
are things that us as males kind of think about, you know, but we just don't ask, we just don't ask those questions. So it's kind of cool to yeah. The bring other, that to the surface. The other thing is we don't really have like a a media source in fishing. Yeah. Like the ones that exist are okay, well, Bassmaster, but they're obviously biased. biased yeah. Bass fan is owned by Bass OSG, Bass. which owns MLF. So no matter what those guys over there think, you're biased. Um, everything is like or or the the media group relies on the same sponsorships we do at, at or Chris does as an angler. So they're getting paid for reviews or whatever. So everything has a twist in bass fishing and they're not really like serving as journalists and not that we do, right. We're biased too, but I think there's the fans still have a ton of questions that never get answered because we don't have a real media source. Would you say that? Yeah. I, and I think at the end of the day, the reason that people tune into your podcast and it's one of my favorites, as you know, um is because of your knowledge and your relationship with the industry and yes. i feel the same way about the show that i yours. do i mean yours yeah ultimately absolutely. we're talking to anglers but yeah but right. what sets anything aside is i have a real relationship with the anglers you know yes. i've seen them at their highs and their lows you yep. have a real relationship with the anglers you've lived that relationship through the anglers Sponsor, eyes you know sponsors so, yeah all that yep yep so you're just I mean, you're just giving what you can give. You know what I mean? Yep. And when I say conflict based, I don't mean that you guys search for conflict, but you no, but, yeah, but kind of do a little bit in some ways. Yeah. You know what I mean? But but that's but that's also who you are, Trey. Like from the right, day yeah. I've met you, like yep. you are the lifeline. <laughs> if I hear something's going on, the first person I will text she knows. is Trey, <laughs> and I'll be like, "What's up with such and as such?" And you'll be like, yeah. "Oh, you haven't heard," and then you'll get <laughs> filled in on it. Um, I just, I talk, I don't think people understand, like, even I talk to so many people. There are a lot of people who trust me, you know, that, yeah. that come to me with things and ask my opinion or want to know, like you said, like what I've heard, but even people we don't work with people we've never worked with or people we've worked with in the past, I still have those relationships. I still text with a lot of them daily. And so I do feel like I have a pretty good pulse. And so when I am like rage tweeting, I probably know a lot more than what I'm saying, you know? So what percentage do you think you hold back? A lot. I know like a lot. More than 50%? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Wow. Yeah. Can we yeah, start a different show? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, I don't, I think that's why people still trust me because they know that I can I'll talk about subjects and I'm willing to make myself look dumb and not reveal what I really know sometimes maybe, or it may seem like I, I don't um, have control, but I do, you know, I, I'm not going to out everything I know. Definitely not. I want people to trust me, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> well, I trust you. Chris, I keep you, looking. <laughs> yeah. You, you as a pro angler, like this, is that ever a conflict for you? Like there has to be, that moment of like, what are you saying? I'm going to have to answer to this to somebody or oh, are you over all that? Absolutely. Well, I, I am over it after this, you know, a couple of conflicts ago. Yeah. I'm, we I'm had a little dust up with a try something. to stay. Yeah. I try to stay in my lane, but yeah, a lot of well, times, yes, this loose cannon sitting next to my right yeah. here. That loose. A lot of times, a lot of times I'll hear like someone will send me a screenshot of like the, that, you know that bravo dinner table like that th those engagements they'll send me like <laughs> the clip or the comments i'm just like dude i don't even know about this like we don't talk about that type of thing I, I, I try not to and uh and yeah i try to stay clear but yeah it does come back and a lot of times if she doesn't come to me with it it's just like i hear it from something else i'm like now i gotta deal with this are you kidding me <laughs> type of thing I try to stay in my lane. I try. I try to stay in that professional. Here's the thing: he, he's lane. got sponsorships, right? So he uh -huh. has to toe that line. the The same thing we were talking about earlier that I feel like these guys rely on their sponsors. They're very afraid to say anything. I don't have those restrictions, so I feel like I can talk. And and it, like you said, it is weird because I'm married to him. I we share the same last name, the same household, so people can say, okay, if she feels that way, that must be how he feels but that's not always the case um but 
Yeah, you know, he lets me be myself though. Dude, a couple this is a couple weeks ago. I was on a on a phone with a with a sponsor, and of course, it's not a sponsor anymore. That that spon- that sponsorship, you know, agreement says X company with Chris Zaldane. Doesn't say trait Zaldane. Yeah. It says in sponsorship in partnership with Chris Zaldane, but. She is a business partner of mine, right? So we share the same bank account. It it uh she makes helps make a lot of the decisions sponsor wise, direction wise. Anyways, we're on the phone and she was also on the phone. So it was us two on the phone with the sponsor. There's a little even, bit of a conflict. I didn't even want to be on the call. Yeah, there's a little bit of a conflict there. And a a a cord was was hit, strummed, and she got a little emotional and she kind of went off on the phone and and the sponsor said hey look i'm gonna end this call right now if she doesn't you know and she's like as far or, you know the sponsor was like as far as i'm concerned chris this relationship Here, is just with you and i here's what happened i said something on a podcast they took offense to it and they kind of flex a little bit and i said your deals with chris not with me like <laughs> don't think you can control me and so, so you know they reciprocated and said hey our yeah. deal is with chris so you don't need to be on this call but so she got dropped but, from the call but no i i exited the call but i didn't want what that person didn't understand i told chris i didn't want to be on it yeah. chris begged me to be on it and i was like there's no reason for me to be on that you know how i feel i don't need to tell them how i feel that's between you and them and chris begged me i knew how it was gonna go because i knew that Here's the thing. These anglers, they're so scared to stick up for themselves. A so lot when, of guys are. So when yeah, I feel you like you keep saying that, do you think they're really scared, Trey? Because yes, I'll be I honest, do. like I don't, I, do. I don't, I can honestly say I've never been scared to say something. I just, there's times when I'm not willing to deal with the bull crap that comes with yes. saying something. Right. And, right. and I don't mean like getting fired by a sponsor. I mean, like you're going to have yeah. to answer to you, when you make your opinion public. The yep. public right. feels like they're in the conversation and you're going to have it with them. But right. but do you think right. anglers are actually fearful? Yes, dude. Yes. Really? With what's there going are, on right now? There are a I lot of guys. I'll absolutely say yes. They're there, scared. There yeah. are a lot of guys on both on both sides who are afraid to to lose a five thousand dollars sponsorship for the year, you know, and and uh, and in this case, you know, everyone's like, well, what sponsor yeah. was that? What sponsor? I just want to like in this part of it, because we probably shouldn't be talking about it, but we are. Um, the, the my issue is just like take better care of the guys who are selling your product and don't. I feel like they push them around and almost bully them instead of putting them in the best situation for these guys to succeed. Like they're willing to put them in a situation that makes it harder on these guys. And, and I'm, I'm the quickest person to say the anglers aren't doing enough or they're not doing their job. Not the case in this situation. And I just snapped because they are okay with chewing anglers out, but the anglers can't give their frustrations back. And it should be a two way street. If you can be frustrated with the anglers, it it should, that it should be more of a mutual partnership. And, and that's something with all the other companies, I feel like we're there. We're working with companies that want to know what's wrong, that want you to say it. And they'll tell you when in the same fashion. But when there's not a two-way street, and I feel like social media is forcing there to be a two-way street. Yeah. Um, and some, But some of these companies have fought it. They, they want to just be able to pay and control, and that's that. But, um, but look, if, if I think that, especially not just Chris, if I think that there are people being wronged, I'm going to say something. And if you have a problem with me saying that, that's, that's on you, not me. I kind of feel that way with all partnership though. Like, like, and I'm not even talking about this situation, but I feel like that, like if somebody is working with a company and they're fearful to be themselves, they're working with the wrong company. Like yeah. literally, exactly. like, you yep. know what I mean? Like, yep. I mean, I'm who I am. There's things yep. that I've done over the years that people are like, oh, I wouldn't have thought the MC at Bass would do that. But then they realize I'm the MC at Bass and they're not shocked by it at all because they know yes. who I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right. it's not like, so that is a weird, a weird part of it. Um, it is. It really is. 
And every case is different. Every sponsor is different. Every angler is different. Yeah. It, everything's different. It's such, it's just another one of those weird things right. of this sport where you just kind of have to, you know, deal with. Yeah. And speaking of, okay. So I've always had this question for you, uh, on stage every now and then you'll be like, you'll do something or say something and be like, man, all right, we better move on before I get in trouble. Do you actually get in trouble? Never. Like for never like a, 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 I shouldn't admit uh -huh. that. <laughs> What's that? He's never I've, gotten in trouble. I've never gotten in trouble once. That's yeah, like part McKinnis of will never say. Yeah, McKinnis will never oh, say, dude. Yeah. No, no. They, yeah, uh, yeah. they, uh, I've only ever been in trouble once and it was a foolish, <laughs> foolish situation um <laughs> it, it, i wasn't even really in trouble but it was it was a yeah. bit of a stuff we Slap. had yeah. um and uh no that i mean a lot of the stuff on stage it's kind of like when Stick. i react to swindle stuff you know yes. what I, mean? I think he's hilarious but I, yeah. i'm gonna sell like when matt robertson yeah. says something i mean you know me i'm a weird little wrestling geek yeah. you got to sell yeah. the other dude when yeah. he slams you it's got to seem real and when yep. Matt Robertson talks about taking a dump off the side of his boat, I'm the MC of Bass. I have That's to harp on that. Let's, yeah. Uh, and and genuinely, I am shocked. Yeah. But you might not see it from my face. And and I just oversell it in certain situations. But yeah, no, no perfect. I, I mean, it's that's perfect. just that's just painting the narrative that everybody wants. I mean, Bass yeah. is the Wizard of Oz, and people just think that there's all the, you know what I mean? Oh, he's not saying that because he's not allowed or he's not. Yeah. I literally have never, I mean, me and Davey, uh, I, and I was actually, I said to Davey, do you think somebody's going to say something to us? Like we literally had at Champlain, I opened a live segment and I'm like, Davey Height, we have people catching fish that they don't even feel hit. Is this actually what pro fishing is today? And we had like a whole debate about. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. But it, it's a re to me, it, if you don't mention that, like if you're yeah. commentating, you're not you just, doing your job. No, yeah. you, you, yeah. you, I agree. You're ignoring the best. And, and, you know, I mean, one of my big influences, especially over the last five, whatever years, is Pat McAfee, who is the biggest name in yeah. sports right now, literally. And when I started watching him, just like you, trade, I was early on with him. So, I, so I'm extra <laughs> cool. Um, it is weird how in life things that if you only know about it, it does seem like you're the only one with that car. It's cool. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But McAfee had between 500 and a thousand viewers and he was doing his show in his basement. Oh. And oh. and what I loved about him was he was just real. And and now he is dominating everything. ESPN college game day. He's doing a uh, red zone this weekend yeah. for college. Yeah. Um, WWE. He was actually, you know, a commentator, but everything he's done is literally just by being real. And I think the world does, if you sit there and watch a forward facing sonar tournament and you don't ever mention it. Yep. You yeah. look like a fool. I mean, literally. Exactly. 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 Yeah, I agree. Totally. And that, that's how I feel too. Like how can we talk about some of these subjects and then ignore some of the biggest conversations we know are going on? regarding those subjects and that's where i you know the the company had an issue but if i don't talk about that then we look like shills or we look like we're completely ignoring something and, and to me it wasn't even that big of an issue like honestly like not a big issue but i that's my biggest frustration in our industry is they want to keep so much quiet and i think it's it hurts more than helps. I think like if you have those sort of conversations, like it's better for your brand. I, I've Some always cases, yeah. been a believer in that. I mean, the conflicts yeah. that get hidden, like, and I don't know. And I, there's been times in the past where conflicts have been over dramatized. Yes. I mean, right. yes. the Kevin and I conflict, you're part of the yep. community. Obviously yep. that yeah. came Not up. A big I mean, yep. the, the funniest that wasn't near and big, Byron. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many of them that got blown out, but literally there's so many that get covered over. Like, yeah, I've always said the problem. One of the things that drove me crazy and it was Cliff Pace is a prime example. When Cliff yeah. won the classic Cliff doesn't give a crap about the classic. He doesn't give a crap. I should read. He doesn't give a crap about the way in. He doesn't give a crap about making <laughs> the TV show. He probably loves the classic. He loves the yeah. fact that he's winning an event that, that he's watched people win. But I still, to this day, like Cliff would come up there 
and act what people thought a Bass Pro should be. I, me and Zona yes. both said to him, dude, be Marshawn Lynch. Get up on that stage and give your version of I'm only here so I don't right. get fined. Like if he went up there and yeah. said, I don't care about lights. I don't care about all these confetti or nothing. I just care about being the best damn Bass Pro on earth. Yeah. He would be, I still think he'd be one of the biggest names in this industry today, just I because agree. look at Marshawn. I mean, yep. but, but it's just by being real. Yep. Yeah, yep. I agree completely, yep. completely. People wow. see that. They, they see it. They love it. I mean, yeah, you and a blind man could see that, that, that passion or that realness. I mean, that's, that's what people love. You said, Chris, when you first started, and, and I think this is true of everybody. I just don't think most people are willing to admit it. I, I, when everybody first starts, they are a rip off of whoever they watched growing up. Yes, I mean, you, you're, you, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, for, you walk on that stage and you're like, well, I gotta, I, I gotta play the part and yep. do, but do you think everybody starts like that? And it takes a while. Like, yes. When was the moment for you when you started feeling you got to get more real or do you feel you're more real already? So it wasn't until I started seeing clips, GoPro clips of myself in my boat being myself and not trying to be a Western legend like Skeet or Ish or Aaron or, or whatever. Cause it, it's only natural, right? For, for you to kind of emulate who you grew up watching, yeah. dude, like that from a little kid watching wrestling or in my case, it was hockey or, you know, like you're trying to be that, that, that person or, or, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to achieve that level of success and your mind wants you to just kind of to, to, to be that, you know, and walk that same lane, that same path. But it wasn't until literally three or four years. And I, I'm sure a lot of lead series guys will say this. It wasn't until like three or four years later where I really started seeing myself be myself on camera, freaking out on that eight pounder with six pound line. Just like, yeah, that's, that's, it. that's me. Dude, that's me. Like that, I need to, I need to continue with that. You know, I'm not forget these other guys. They're they're their own people. Um, I I think I I saw it happen at the split when he made that post. That dude, said, that's way late. I, yeah. I, no, you started being yourself definitely on camera, but then when the split happened, I saw you just really the confidence come come out of you that we had to. Me, oh, you, Dave, Zona, four you had other to guys. Be we had to. You know, yeah, we did. We did it. Right. It. I agree with you there, though, Trey. Like, I, I mean, I, I feel like a, and I also feel like the split gave Chris the opportunity, the amount of time, to mm -hmm. for people to see who he really was. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, it is hard team, yeah. to ha hang yeah. with the group that was there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Just, right. just yeah. for simple stage time, camera time. Um, yeah. Right. I think, and that's what's crazy because he was fishing well before the split happened. He had several top tens and AOIs, but people still really didn't know him. And I was, and you know, before the split too, like the whole, and that was another thing I wanted to talk about. Like a lot of like these days, guys are really, are really starting to explain more of kind of what's going on on the water. You know, I remember back in, you know, 14, 15, 16, where like if the camera was in my face, I would kind of explain what was going on, the patterns and why I'm doing this or that while I'm on the clock. You know, this isn't like a wire to fish shoot where we're giving a whole tutorial, but like you're starting to see more and more guys. And especially in 2019, when the camera was on me, like I would make a point to say, hey, you know, to to say, oh, my gosh, these water conditions, this is why I'm doing this and actually taking the time to show the exact lures or techniques or patterns or the, my screen and why I'm looking for this type of topography on the screen and really educating, uh, you know, the fans, the viewers, uh, in the back of my mind, because, Hey, look, I, I want us to succeed as BASS in 2019. So yeah. So that confidence she talks about, I mean, that has a lot to do with it, but prior to that, even, um, you know, I've always kind of been, you know, like, let's share it with everyone. Right. That's why we're all here. That's why this camera is in my boat. Let's let everyone know verbally, you know, why I'm, I'm choosing to fish this particular bank or drop off or long sloping point or, or whatever it is. I feel like that's how it should be all the way around. And in order for this whole sport to move forward, that, that type of transparency and education needs to be blasted all over the place, in my yeah. opinion. And that's just one little facet of it. The other little facet is, is, uh, is, 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 is the entertainment side, which you and Zona are absolutely the best and, 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 um, stop it. And I'm not getting compliments. Height. Stop this. Davey Hyde, and you guys are the best at that on the entertainment side. 
But again, I say it all the time. It is up to us as professional bass anglers to provide that ammunition, uh, you know, for you guys to talk about, you know, and, and entertain. So yeah, the education side definitely is on, on us and, and, uh, and, and the entertainment side, you guys, you guys take care of day in and day out weekly. I, I'll, I'll go back to that split thing though, because I'll say, I feel like Chris, because he does tell everything he's doing. He, and he'll do it on day one on Bass Live. I mean, give the Send keys it. to oh, the well. kingdom. Oh, well. <laughs> but he's got, I, I feel like once that split happened, he had this confidence that, which he always has been a confident person, but that he'll catch them even if everyone knows what he's doing or he'll always be one step ahead. Even like when it's swim baiting, he gives out everything he knows, but he, I feel like he's so confident in what he does. He knows he's going to figure another tweak out before everyone else does. And so it's fine. Like they all help them catch fish and, but I'm going to keep, I, I'm just a step ahead. And so I think that that translates, right? So um, something I, I think Welcher is one of the best fishermen in fishing. I've said this since the moment Incredible. I watched him on Bass Live his rookie year, but mm -hmm. he holds back. He does not put it all poker out there. Player. He's a poker yeah. fish. Well, I think I feel like if he would be more confident in how good he is, because he's got the same, I see the same things I saw in Chris. Um, if he would be more confident and not be afraid to put it all out there, he his brand would just explode because he is so good and he's always going to be a step ahead, but some guys, they don't have that confidence that what they're doing, even if you give it to everyone else, they're not going to catch up with you. There's no doubt Kyle Welter thinks about things that most people. I don't think it's do lack not. of confidence though. No, it's, like it's, him, I think so. it's, it's, you it's don't show your cards. Player. Like exactly. I think, he's like, a poker player. Yep. I shot a yep. podcast with him while he was in the middle of that race. Yep. Right. I'll tell you how secretive he is. He was in Detroit pre-practicing. The only, You guys know, before we hit record, I always just say, is there anything you want to make sure we talk about and anything you want to make sure we don't talk about? He said, the only thing I'm, is off limits is don't tell them where I am. I don't want anyone knowing wow. I'm here. And I'm like, really? And he said, and I said, why? And he says, I, I just don't want to motivate anyone. And, and to me, wow. that's also who he is. But, but But the point that you brought up about Chris and sharing I think that's one of the things that happened in the split that nobody yeah. thinks about, like how much the sport changed. Sure. There was a bunch of new guys introduced. Sure. There was all this different things that happened and people leagues yeah. were pushed to work harder, but yeah. ultimately it got a lot more transparent. Like we literally went from the yeah. year before the split. Edwin Evers was literally hiding his yep. bait. Like he would not show his bait to the camera yeah. person. Right. And and that was not like frowned upon. It was just like what he had chosen to do. True. And now yeah. you look at like, you know, what's on Chris's sandwich. And it yeah. is <laughs> true. It is a big part. And of other it. guys and other, not my, yeah. not just me, like everyone else too. Everyone, the nine out of 10 guys in the top 10 being covered that day. Yeah. I mean, you, you know exactly what's what, but I feel like, especially right now, because sponsors are tightening up budgets, the economy, like we're yeah. all fools to not, understand what's going on in our economy boat sales are down slowing down everything's slowing down we've got a lot of inventory and i hear it when these guys talk and they just don't understand why they're getting cut back or they're not getting these deals and someone else is well it has to do with look chris had a bad year and he's still getting offers and bumps in a bad economy but i feel like those companies trust that when he is on camera He's going to put it all out there He'll and that's what impact. they need. You know, that's, that's a huge part of this. So if you just want to go fishing and make your winnings fishing, do you, but if you want to create a brand and a brand that when companies have some money to spend, you're the first thing they think about, you got to open up. It's, it's just part of it, you know, and I, I struggle with some of these guys because they do whine. Why don't we get that? Why don't we get that? I'm like, you're a dud on the front of the boat why yeah. would you get that yeah like do you look in the mirror yeah. do you watch yourself on live and think yeah that's awesome <laughs> you know it's true though dave you know it and, no, I, and that's I, you know I it's a huge problem in our industry that's know? why he makes that awesome speech every year at the classic or before the redfish cup or whatever. don't be that dud 
it's and one of the most one of the most concerning things that came out of the forward facing sonar debate that has gone on forever and th- thankfully mlf got people quiet about that i mean yeah uh, it it's took true. longer than i expected i kept saying something will come along and it'll become the topic um yep. but the um trait where was I going? Mm-hmm. Look at me. Uh, I'm an idiot. You're talking I about totally... forward facing sonar and the oh, best thing that came out of one it. One of the worst thing that came from it. The oh, worst please. narrative that I heard is I heard several anglers say, listen, it isn't my job to entertain. It isn't my job to it's the league's job. And listen, the league's gonna do lots. I mean, there's gonna they've but they already can only done do it, so you know much. I mean? but they can yeah. only do so much and and be careful what you wish for, is my advice. Yeah. Because everybody's yes. saying put the screen on the TV. I get it. That makes it more exciting. But remember what we're doing. We're putting the yep. screen sure. on the TV. Everything the you're TV. doing. The exactly. Deck, how you present exactly. it. Everything. Your little tricks, the little twitches. Yep. You just gave it all away. Yep. Yeah. But you, because you, you also didn't want to be more fun. Yeah. A little bit. Because all of a sudden, I'm not looking at Chris Aldane. All of a sudden, True. I'm, yep. I'm focused on a screen. You know what screen. I mean? I'm watching exactly. the game you're as right. opposed to the actual player. Um, right. That is true. Never thought about that. And, and, I just feel like anglers have to understand, like you're in a business that it's not fair. It's not like baseball. Like people get mad. If you talk to the manager during in between innings in baseball, you got to compete, talk, you know, and entertain like it. It's, it's just how our sport works. Um, So I I don't get that whole, we, we don't have to do this. Like, and I think most anglers think, right. But there is a, there is a belief that, I mean, one of the things that you hear often, and I'm sure you've heard it, Chris, and we promised to hold nothing back, but one of the things that came from the split is Zaldane's on camera again. Zaldane. Yeah, yeah, I like, hear it all oh, the time. Dude, I, heard, yeah. I got and, people calling me saying that pros were like tr- saying Bass was favorite, like playing favorites and stuff. And I was like, did you see that he almost won? He was got second four times, almost won AOY and the Classic. Like he earned those moments. Yeah. And then he gave everything to the public so all these sound bites and clips came from it like that was work he wasn't if he would have hid what he was done maybe he would have won a couple of those you know with the spoon not flopping everywhere and stuff is that whatever. how you really feel Trey? Did, like no, was that the I, conversation no, when he I got home I don't. <laughs> no, I don't, but i'm just i i was really upset back then that they thought that favorites were being played when i knew how much work he was putting into it you know and it's and anglers are so bad even what we're watching with mlf right now they don't want to look at themselves and what's to blame on themselves they'll blame saldane for being on the camera so much or bass for putting him on the camera but not reflect about what they're not doing to get on the camera and that infuriates me saying it's just dude since 2019 i've been every time you know the production team you know would whether it's at a classic or at the first tournament or whatever they would text me the night before and say okay we're gonna put a camera in your boat Every single time I wasn't like, you know, oh yeah, an opportunity to shine. It's it was never like that. Honestly, Dave, it was okay. It, this remember 2019, the split happened. All my heroes went one way. Myself, Seth, uh, f- you know, Bill Owen, uh, Kennedy, uh, Drew Benton, Drew Benton, a couple yeah. other guys, yeah, yeah. Holmes. Uh, we all stayed. When they when they texted me and said, "Hey, look, we're gonna put a camera in your boat," it was again. It was never like, "Oh yeah, again, a camera again." It was never like that. It was like, "Okay, I'm gonna step up and I'm gonna be a team player," and that is legit, honest, honest truth. Like, okay, we got, I got him. I feel like it's my job to make the whole team look good. I gotta make Dave Mercer look good. I, I feel like I gotta give Zona ammunition to talk about and just be entertaining and educational a little bit. But it was never like, you know, like whenever they would text me, that's like, okay, let's let's lift everyone up. Let's uh uh no, that's not the right terminology. It's it's literally let's make the let's make the team look good. Let's be a player position. Player. Dude, if you're a wide exactly. receiver that's in a it. game, Center, you want to catch exactly. you want the ball coming to you every exactly. damn time. And if you don't, you shouldn't be a wide receiver Correct. on that team. Correct. Like that's you shouldn't be thinking I lane. hope they give that it to somebody it. else. No, that's, you, so that's it. When that's I've I've heard about people um turning down cameras saying they don't want the camera to vote even at the classic i heard it happened and in my head the first and foremost i think about your sponsors Mm -hmm. pay you to be on that camera like that is why you're able to fish yes i know you want to win and keep things secret 
but they're giving you the opportunity to even have a chance to go win. Yeah. And that was your chance for them to get their ROI. And you was just like, boom, or that was your chance to get that big clip that plays forever, you know, to have a fish land that lives way beyond that season that gets played every classic or every time you go to that lake. And you just said, nope, nope. Yeah. It's nuts. I mean, we have anglers that some of them and and 99.9% of them are great, but there is, there is, I mean, I wouldn't go that high, um, but there is, there is. <laughs> A lot of and, and people, like I said, be yourself. You might not be Chris Alden. Chris Alden yeah. is the way he is. But the, I mean, I think of one particular angler that we've heard of multiple times from him, from his family. Like, why isn't he on camera? Why isn't he on camera? He was on camera this year and I literally watched and he boated a five pound. It might have been last year, but in the last I know two you're years. talking about. I know um, you're talking about. He, yeah, and, well, I don't. And, uh, Maybe you did. Uh, I know. Yeah. But he yeah. boated a fish and I've watched him boat a fish and he like a five pound smallmouth bass. And he puts this fish in the boat, does not say a word, unhooks it, puts it in the live well and gets up. And and, yeah. and you're wondering why you're not like we're going to yeah. cover the event. It is an event, but it's a performance based yeah. sport, just like everything else. Yeah. And you, you got to give, you know, yep. or it's you look at the UFC talents and even boxers yeah. and there are guys who win that don't make as much money as some other guys because they don't put in that effort to promote. And, and it doesn't just come down to the win column. It comes down to who's all buying your fight. It's it, more than just the angler sponsors too. It's way more than that. It's providing again, providing ammunition for BASS to go to sponsors and garner more sponsorship because you are a part of this team so the next time, you know, you boat this five pounder and, you know, this five pound smallmouth comes in and, you know, you are become marketable. That's exactly what it is. You are marketable to for bass to use you as ammunition to gain more sponsorship. And that was the other kind of argument is kind of that's where it starts. And that's how this whole relationship should work. I know it's a lot more complex than that right there. But if you do your job as an angler, uh, bass in turn could sell that to potential sponsors and we could all make more money. That's kind of it in a nutshell. That's kind of what's going on in, you know, in our head in our conversations, but um, it, it really is give, give some, take some, but it's all, we're all on the same team. We really are. You hear a lot of anglers talking about, you know, the payouts, payouts are crap. Yes. Okay. They haven't gone up much. Our entry fees are still the same. But, what, but ask but they yourself, have. have you been? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the thing. Ask yourself, can you be doing? Can you provide more value for the team to all move towards better payouts? I think that's one of my biggest um, arguments. You know, and they they talk about the money needs to be shared further down or whatever it is, and um, and. I'm a I'm an American. I'm conservative. Everybody knows that. And I feel like there are certain people that pull their weight and there are a lot of people that don't. And until everybody's pulling their weight, we can't have everyone. We can't have those big payouts and everything. And and it's always the anglers who do the least who are <laughs> bitching about payouts. And I'm like, dude, you of all people are not helping the team. Like, you why do you deserve better payouts? But honestly, you know, and I hate, and I can, I'm, I'm going to come off callous saying that, but it's true. You know, if I was running the business, you know, um, that's what I would be thinking, you know, y'all aren't helping us. Well, and you look at some of the stuff going on with payout, like one of the things that frustrates me that never gets talked about is, and listen, I'm all for anglers making more. You guys sure. know that. I, I will the lose my job there, one day. Make, yeah. <laughs> but I will most likely lose my job one day because I'm fighting for anglers. You know what I mean? Uh, like you did a lot in 2019, too. Well, no, I'm not even saying, I'm yeah. just saying that, that I'm saying, obviously yeah. that's, I'm not a company guy as many people would think. Like, I mean, I love the company I work for, but if you yeah. look at some of the stuff that they've done and has been voted that way, like, for example, if you finish 51st to 70th, you get a $2,500 check that yep. nobody ever talks about. Like nobody, right, yep. like I've seen anglers literally walk away from the trailer and go like, wow, I got a check. I didn't think yeah. I got a check. Like it's that, yeah. that's $50,000. Yep. 
Tomorrow, yeah, right. Bass could make first place $150,000 just by getting rid of that one paycheck that nobody yep. notices or ever yep. talks right. about when they yep. want to bitch about payouts not going up yep. and look like stars. But the, well, they're it, doing what the anglers want in that situation. Sure. Which and the, is, ML, the MLF payout for what they're going to or whatever to that 50 model they're paying two grand from like 21st to 50. Our yeah. guys make what 51st to 75th or something makes $2,500 yeah. makes more than that. And like you, and it's the same entry fees and no, and, and somehow I'm seeing they have better payouts and, and it's not a pissing contest, but I do like think that came across my head. Do y'all not realize like it, like you said, like it's, it's getting better. It, it may be moving slower, but our product of what we're, our package is moving slow too, you know, so of what we're putting out there on TV and, and everywhere. I think the social media at Bass is getting so much better. I think oh, that yeah. opportunity yeah. is about to really, uh, like every time I see a funny post, I'm like, yes, here we go. Yeah. We're like getting with the times, you know? So I'm hopeful. The, you eat, uh, you slurping oysters down gold. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> that was I like social the part media. that Davey yeah, you know, had to know? eat pig's feet i mean yeah, here's the best yeah. part oh yeah, i don't yeah. mind oysters i really like them but good, it became yeah. a thing on live where you got to go find these oysters yeah and and then uh i had to get davy back so i told ashley afterwards so those who didn't see it he dared me to eat oysters i couldn't find oysters they were supposedly out of season found a place that had oysters ate oysters and then told davy has to eat something and we were like literally looking like what do we we wanted to ship them like prairie oysters or mountain oysters which are bull balls which we couldn't get them there quick as you can get oh them to little rock God. arkansas 72 hours but I'm thankfully not gonna lie, i like i like rocky mountain oysters when they're fried right they're really good somehow I that think... that is on brand for you trait loves yeah. to eat a set of balls and and mad at me for pointing it out for us. yes um <laughs> So we we got David to eat pig's feet, which was um, which was fun, but uh, equally as fun, yeah. I, I think I won. I think I won. After after we were done, I said to Ashley, I said, "This is either going to go one of two ways. By nobody's ever going to challenge me to eat something on live ever again, or yeah. by this time next year, it's going to be gross. Lord knows what we'll be eating." <laughs> But uh, uh, how about the nah. mayflies? You ate mayflies on camera too, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, cicadas, a cicada, cicada. once. Stupid you ate a things. cicada too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, but you'll good. eat a cicada, That's and you're hearty. you're worried about Rocky Mountain oysters. <laughs> Well, I didn't say I was worried about them. I'm just not excited about them. I wasn't excited about the cicada either. Cicada I'm not excited either. about yeah. half the crap I do, but I'll do anything if a camera's on. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Came <laughs> from. <laughs> I don't See, know. you're a team player. You're a team player that entertains for the whole team. Well, sometimes. No. <laughs> sometimes. But you do think, your part. I think you fishing has part. been hurt by the economy several yeah. times. Yeah. Like if you look at how yeah. things were ramping up, and then 2008 happened, and yeah. things are definitely ramping up, and now this is happening. It's, like it's yes. not it's not good. Um, I've heard things like people who should get decent. Boat deals aren't getting them. Yeah. Um, glass fiberglass boats are not moving right now. Um, and that's what concerns me when you see what's going on at MLF too. Um, whether they admit they're making cost saving cuts or not, whatever. We know what's going on in the economy, so we can all be smart about that. And so when it comes to opportunities, they are gonna get slimmer. So it, it, if there's not a, as many professional spots the fish um or or if there are there's going to be less sponsorship money out there so either way we're i think anglers aren't aren't really paying attention to what's happening in our economy if we go to war um and i i i'm concerned that there's going to be many that get caught you know in it's, a bad place it's crazy the, the economy slows down but that demand for that elite series spot continues to go up like i mean wouldn't you agree like i mean there are more fired up guys trying to go through nine opens to get to the elite at least guys who are buying boats and not getting like a memo deal or a demo deal i'm thinking how 
like what's the interest rate like nine percent or something yeah. on boats right now i'm just like how are they doing that and then you talk about credit card rates imagine being it, a canadian trying to do it yeah it's it's uh it's such a yeah. it's it's tough or a japanese and then, angler and then if they're one of the guys who just want to fish and don't want to put themselves out there <laughs> i'm really like how are they going to do this uh, it's, right? it's going to be tough you're going to have a tough I mean, and that, but that's right. another reason that I think like when the nine having to qualify through the nine events in the opens came out, there was a bunch of people who went nuts about it because it's, they can't qualify through three events anymore. But if you look at like even our conversation here today, it just kept in my head thinking about, okay, now they've announced that all of those events are going to be televised. All of those events right. are going to camera time. So you look at that group of nine that's coming this year. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. they've spent a bit of time on camera. The nine that come next year, they'll have spent yeah. a lot more time on more camera. Time. They're, They're prepared right. and prepared yeah. to be an elite series pro. Polished and they have an opportunity to start building a brand. And that's what I think a lot of people don't understand. It it will give them a little more to go when they do make it. When they say, Hey, striking, can we talk? You know, strike there's a chance striking knows who they are at that point that before they didn't, you know, with just a photo gallery or an article, um, that's huge. And also for you guys to see how people are on a boat ahead of time, you, you can do your job better. I mean, that everyone get can plan better in that scenario. So I'm, I'm thankful that Bass found a way to, to get, um, live in the opens in every event. I think it's well needed. And, um, I think a lot of good's going to come out of it in the next few years. You know, yeah, I think long term, it's like when the elite started, there was pushback. I mean, if you yeah. if back then, there was people who were like, I mean, Mark Davis left. A lot of people left. I mean, they're just yeah. like under different pretense. And MLF at that time was FLW, you know, right. and um, I, but I think by having the way, more... by the way, I was just sorry to cut you off when the elite series started in 06. Uh, what's his, the MC was Keith something? Keith Allen. Keith Allen. Keith Allen. So you were you were like a fan, a fishing fan, watching from Canada during those times. Dude, I'll give you the dirt up. Here's something you should ask that question when I come on your podcast one day. But yeah, here's right. the Sorry, greatest yeah. answer. I actually applied for that job, believe it or not. Oh, and I tell my kids that all the time and different things because, oh wow, here's the truth. I applied. So I was MC in tournaments at home in Canada. I had done like some stand up and a bunch of different things at the time. And in the um, early 2000s, I mean, that's yeah, about, yeah, yeah. And, huh. and, uh, so when I got to know a bunch of different people, you know, from Bass and stuff like that. And Timmy Horton of all people was in oh, Toronto. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shocker. Uh, dude was in Toronto <laughs> doing a, um, a Bass Pro thing and we worked together. And he was the first guy, but Kelly Jordan jumped on board and a few of them saying, Hey, Bass is going to hire a new MC because everyone hmm. kind of knew. I think Fish hung him out a few times. Fish, he held yeah, out right. and got paid a lot. Um, so they had, but Fish was the MC in 2005. So in 2006, the wow. Elite Series is going to start and Started. they knew that they were going to hire a new MC. So Fish is the MC. So I send all sorts of like stuff for me doing stand up and me playing characters and all. Because I'm, I mean, they're replacing Fish Fishburn. I think this is what they want. You sent and, in videos like audition videos. Oh, I went through a whole interview and everything. Yeah, wow. did not get the this. job. <laughs> um, so wow. they they uh, they gave me. Um, so I had to interview. I forget the girl's name, but I had talked to her on the phone and everything, and I had a good relationship with her. But she said, "Hey, we're going to go in another direction." And and I've always been crushed. somebody who, if I if it doesn't go, which I was crushed. Trust me, that was dream yeah, job. Man. I'm like, this opportunity will never come up again. Like. Um, so I said, why didn't I get it when I asked, I called her back after I found out? And she said, uh, she said, well, to be honest, we don't want um, a character. We don't want I a guess. personality oh, was wow. her word. She said, she said fish kind of held us for a barrel. A few yeah, times. right, right. And when they first started, here's the kicker. They actually hired three MCs. They hired uh, Keith Allen, mm -hmm. Robbie Floyd. Yeah. And Don Day. And Don is the voice of God. That's of what his the, position the, yeah. at the classic. He yeah, does the intros. Yeah, yeah. But their whole idea at the time was their ESPN announcers 
they can come in. If Don's here one week, then Robbie comes in the next week and vice versa. You know what I mean? So when I threw, like when I'm showing videos of me with wigs and all sorts of crap on, they're like, no, 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 no. we don't want another one of these We need to pull those clips. We need to pull those clips. (laughs) So I actually applied for the job and didn't get it. But in retrospect, many years later, I say all the time, like, I'm glad I didn't get it. I wasn't ready for that job probably at the time. I probably would have done something really dumb um and and it's weird how life works then years later wow you know it it ends up you know a new ownership and they wanted a new mc and um yeah it's, wow. it's wild it's wild but it's a good motivator when i tell my kids when they yes. try anything i'm like man and and it's the truth like that dude yeah. who just fell short of an elite cut or whatever i mean yeah there's that guy many- bobby lane that, well, that Bobby I mean, Lane. he doesn't need the motivation. Keep trying, Bobby but... Lane. Yeah, you'll, you'll you'll make a name for yourself one day. <laughs> <laughs> he'll he'll be there. Um, yeah. which was heartbreaking to see him get that close. But oh, yeah. I mean, all, all of those. I mean, that's that's the tale of that is heartbreak. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. it. Would yeah. you would you be all about going back and qualifying through those, Chris, or would that? Oh would that gosh, be dude, don't even ask horrible, me. isn't it? I, I, yeah, I. It could have been very well. Could have been me. You know, I, I yeah. Yeah. I wish they would take 20 people from the, or 19 from the opens in one nation. Like, honestly, I wish that they would keep 80 elite guys and then 20 new people would come in because I think that's one of the faults is one, they're missing a few. Like, if you look in the standings every year, there's always a couple of really good people who Sam have George star power potential. Is always right Sam, there. Sam. It kills me. He's one of my oh. closest friends. It, yeah. it tears me up every year. And, and I feel like, when it comes to finding guys who have it all, who can help the team, um, we need more options, not less. We we need to um, be be bringing in more, and and they'll the talent will work itself out. But we we shouldn't be bringing in less people if we're really wanting to grow what we're doing, what what the industry's doing, uh, more new star power. Um, keeping our product from aging. Um, I feel like the more exclusive we make it, like MLF's doing, I think it's bad for the industry personally. And I, I, I think a model of keeping 80 people is right. I think that that keeps the people who should be on the elites and are proving themselves and, and 20 new people gives more opportunities, you know, makes the opens make a little more sense. Yeah. I don't know. It, well, you say to somebody, you got to finish in top 20. Uh, or right. top nine it's a world like i asked davy height once i'm like davy how many top nines did you have an angler of the year and right. this was off the top of his head so it might not be exact but he's like i won angler of the year twice so remove those and yeah. he said but outside of those in the top of his head he said i think about four others you know or five wow. others where he was in the top 10 so you think about that like to top 10 and angler of the year and that's a Hall of Fame career Davey had. Right. Yes. It, yes. It, you can fish and fish good. Like you look at how high those points were this year. Like Panger, yeah. who you've talked about. I mean, he had it all worked out yeah. to I need to weigh in this much. Blew yeah. all of those numbers yeah. away. Like not yep. even close. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it it's a tough deal. Um, what do you do if you're one of those dudes over there? Um, not that we're the right people to be quoting on it, but what what do you <laughs> what do you because so, obviously they're going to stick with 50. I think I don't think that changes. I don't care yeah. how hard they fight. Because I heard they all s- sign their contract except three. So they're all signing up to, for another so year. Boyd's back it. in. Yeah. Because uh, I heard I two think, is his number to get back in. Right, yeah, that's what I heard is three didn't. Um, wow. I feel like it, this is where I struggle with it. They whine so much. You hear about them whining. They're calling their sponsors. There's they were calling Bass trying to get Legends exemptions. Like they they don't like where they are, but they're not willing to change it. So, and some of them make plenty of money where they could change the scenery. And they don't, they, there's a lot of ego involved. And, and I, it's crazy. It's crazy to me to hear how them whining because they do talk to us now. And still not doing anything about it's a it. Tough situation. It, it, you won't fully understand until you're in their in their shoes, you know. But 
it's just, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's brutal to think about. I try to put myself in their shoes from time to time. And we still talk to a lot of guys and it seems like over this past month, month and a half, maybe two months, we've had guys reach out and want to come on the build podcast and talk conflict. Um, and we've never seen that before. So, um, yeah, this, this Who's far, the most shocking guy that reached out. Well, they we can't really talk about it because oh, they, on, most of them got m- m- most of them got the cold time. feet. Most of oh, they yeah. got cold Sounds feet, good. and yeah. and, yeah. It, and well, some that I hear you're going it, on that podcast. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and and the funny thing is, they just sign the contract and stay over there. You know, they get real upset, and then they don't do anything about it. So it's I think it's hard to um feel for them for me anymore because that i do know like sponsors are saying they'll support them if they go to the opens and it's almost like they want to be told what to do so that they can blame someone else if it doesn't go right or if anglers get mad at them and it, that's kind of frustrating you know like no one wants to see everyone lose their job but yeah. also you have to you have to take control you know you have more control than you lead on that's what i feel like with some of them yeah no i, you don't I think feel so? bad no, I feel bad. I, I feel yeah, I do. So like, I, I can't, point, I I can't ha- harbor the hate like you, Trey. Trey it's, uh, it's yeah. not, it's One not thing hate. I know is if I piss you off, we're probably never talking again. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not, it's not hate. It's, it's for me, it's if, you, if it's so bad for you, if what you're saying is so bad and, and, and he's not listening to you, then why are you signing up again? Especially well, with some of them that, that I know they make plenty of money from sponsors. And so that can't be the excuse. But again, put yourself in their shoes. It's not a guaranteed. Okay, I'm gonna sign up for nine opens. It is not a guarantee. I, know. I, I completely Look agree. Look at the kids there. who like sni- sniped Bobby Lane and Ish Monroe. Like they, they, they did their job. You know, it's not a shoe and what's you know whatsoever. It's not a guarantee. I completely agree there. So if we're talking about yeah, the potential of them not making it through the opens, very high for a lot of them. I do think. So there are a few of them who are doing well and will be just fine in the opens if they did it. And, yeah. um, and so those are the ones I'm really talking about. There are some that are going to get kicked off that obviously I don't think they'd make it through the opens. So I understand that part, but they're going to get kicked off anyway. So. Yeah, it's, it's a tough, I mean, it's always tough, but it's also sports, you know, like yeah. it, it, what makes their situation tough is because they were promised so much more. Literally, that, like that, that's really, what pisses me off. That's yeah. that's, that's only, it. and that's why they went there because this yeah. was going to be safe. And this was, I'm, yeah. you know, you sure. hear yeah. people saying, we "I was going to ride out the next ten years or whatever." Like yeah. in their head, they had a number, yeah. and I, you can't ride out life. Like, yeah, that's what what makes me mad is that he used their platforms to build his business, and now that he's gotten everything out of their their fans and their platforms and their sponsors even now he's gonna cut them like he he had nothing he had a they had mlf but it was not that big until these guys go on their social media a week later tell everyone this is the latest greatest thing they become puppets they go parading around they did everything they could for that brand to build it and it's just that easy to say okay i don't need you anymore goodbye that's what's crazy that, and tough. I do feel for I feel for the guys there definitely you know because they they got used in my opinion yeah but ultimately it was just one bad decision and yeah. it, you know it, it's I've always said you can't judge somebody like literally there was only one dude during that whole thing when we were up till three in the morning talking to different everybody was talking to different pros there was only one person who I said you need to stay of all them because I like I, not Brandon, not anybody. Did I say? I said you got to make Justin? your own mind up because I don't want who, Justin. No AOI. No, 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 no. Kevin. They, do you know who I told us? To who Kevin was a different situation, right? right, um, right, right, right. Um, but yeah, I feel he Jordan should too. Or Justin. Uh, no. no, you know who it was. It's a very close who? friend of ours, Cliff Crochet. Yeah, and I feel it even more to today. Like if Cliff Crochet, yes. today. who yeah. does he become? Like he is such a personality, yeah. and yeah. and dude, you're 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 you went from being the frog guy who fishes yeah. for five to a league where it's like every it, 
it was so many reasons yeah. for him not to. Yeah. yeah. We were but on the phone with him yesterday. Yeah. That safety made him feel like that's I I got to do that for my family and and yeah. I understand that, but it's it's just a shitty situation really. Like if yep. you look at it all, it's yeah. it's it is. It is. It's we're tough. we're yeah, we're very much past all the competition, animosity, and now it's just like, oh boy, like we feel for you, dude. Like, yeah, I know I come off cold but i really do care about the anglers my <laughs> issues are with boyd for the most part there's a couple anglers over there that i feel like um don't care about anyone else and but my issues are just i really do feel for the anglers but i also like because of how much energy i've put into it the last few weeks building their phone calls and their text messages it also frustrates me like don't come bitching if you don't want to do anything about it, you know, like, you know, it, it gets to a point where well, it's what like, can, okay, what can they do, Trey? Well, that's the I, thing. That's, I, yeah. I guess I don't, I guess I'm just, I don't yeah. know. I would go to the opens. I would, I would, I would try. If you think that it's so bad that finance, because that's, this is what I'm being told financially, there are issues and they're concerned. It's not going to last longer. And so if you think it's that bad, why are you writing it out? Why don't you want to change your future right now? You know, yeah. that, and, and look, I'm a know-it-all, so I get it. You know, I, I probably don't know anything I'm talking about, but, <laughs> but I don't understand not wanting to make a change now. If you are literally You've been saying, burned like, already. Yeah. yeah. Like, yes. Like, and so do they think like if it folds, then maybe Bass will just let us right in, you know, because then that's they'll the rumors. Backwards. Like yeah. they made that that rumor seem so apparent that literally I called Chase like Zona called Chase. There was a bunch of us that were like, we just keep hearing that you're gonna and he just absorb them. Yeah, yeah. Which which is I mean, it's just crazy to me. I just it feel horrible. And and for when it's happening, like you, we've already talked, the economy's going bad, and now you got a group yes. of bank like of all times to cut, like of all times that a league could use yes. some bolstering and strength around them. It, it doesn't seem Bad. like the time. And I'm a proponent of smaller fields. I'm a proponent of right. it being easier to market less guys and that sort of I thing. Yeah. Um, not now, though. Like, not yeah. – there's times to not do like it. Not like this. Yeah. And, no. and not out of the blue, too, you know? Like, yeah. that's, that's what's crazy. There are some people who are considered angler owners who were surprised when this news came out. They had no clue. That's crazy to me. Wow. Would you like to have Boyd on your podcast? I would, but he is so full of it. He is, I mean, when he does his little with his mouth and stuff, I just die laughing. You know, he's a salesman. He talks and I just don't vibe with salesmen. I don't, <laughs> not, it's not a good scenario. <laughs> so I would, I would love to talk to him, you know, on a podcast. It'll never happen. Uh, rightfully so. Um I don't know that he would ever shoot me straight. I watched the Ike thing and there were things he was saying that I, I, I know things about that. I'm just like, why, why spin it? You know? Yeah. They asked him some, some toughish questions, but they, there was never a follow up. You know what I mean? Correct. Like the, it, it, Correct. that's where it, I think question and, slash statement. Yeah. And they, they've been in the podcast game longer than all of us combined. Of us. So yeah. I have yeah. much respect yeah. for Becky and I yeah. for two of yeah. my favorite people on earth to hang out with, you know, yeah. like, but that's where, but they're also, I mean, he what agreed to be on their podcast. Situation? What do you do in that situation? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause right. when I watched it, I'm like, well, why don't you just, Follow that up with this. Um, right, right. right. When always, you're in the heat of the moment, it's always it's, harder. Yeah. It's a lot yeah. tougher. But yeah, I think he spins a few things and I think that's what he does well. He's a he can spin things and he's got that down. And that's that's how they got, you know, 65 plus elite anglers, you know, yeah. him doing what he does, talking about his rocket ship, you know, and that you're going to get left behind <laughs> and, and people believed it, you know, and so. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, it, it is it, tough though for those guys because there are a lot of guys who are very they know that in a year they don't have a career anymore. And like you said, with the economy, I can't imagine them doing this their whole life, working as hard as they did to get where they were, qualifying every year, having okay, this is the number I have to get to. So every year they've been doing their job and now it's all over. Yeah, it's tough. 
It's tough. And, and um, having to fish this year, right? They still have to oh fish God. another year. I can't wait to see some of the, I mean, you Online? think James Watson's live when he gets a camera? You think that's going to be entertaining? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, man. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, uh, no, it'll, it'll be crazy. Um, and, you know, one thing that is easy to do is us doing a podcast. I think we could do like yeah. a four hour podcast and yeah. still like, be, like get off yeah. and be like, damn. We forgot to talk about this. Um, yeah. I do have one other question that I wanted to ask, though. And this is of Chris, because I believe you have the entire Elite Series feeling like you are building a freaking forward-facing sonar spaceship this year. <laughs> Just by saying, I'm going to invest in making the best board. And yeah. I honestly think that not only you've got the motor, but I think that's what's happening. Like, I think yes. there is a lot of pros. A lot of guys. That, like, you thought live you thought that was a big deal last year. Like it's going to be like obnoxious Joyous is the, like there's going to be stuff hanging off of boats everywhere. Oh, How yeah. crazy is your system going to be? Are you willing to tell me about it or? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. So out? yeah, good question. So I'm fortunate enough to, uh, to be partnered with a retailer, one of the largest retailers in our space. Um, so I'm pretty fortunate to kind of, you know, not you know i guess make a make a wish list make a make a cart build a cart of some of the things that uh, that will benefit not only me fishing wise but also you know we'll open up some avenues on the youtube channel of like how to's of this this strength of Basically. this electronics this strength of that electronics yeah. um so pretty fortunate there but i will say yes koya really set the precedence there everyone's talking about oh the six sonar transducers he has and look how you know, he won so many tournaments top threes these last few um i will say i had one of the biggest riggers in our sport so there's a couple of rigging companies that that rig a lot of the elite series guys boats uh there's a guy from the carolinas who really isn't no he's more of a, a bumpkin fisherman like a big flip flip a jig type thing guy and um this rigger sent me a picture of his boat just two days ago. He has got four 12 inch graphs up front four 12s. It's a giant screen, just giant, giant quad screen of graphs on the front of his boat with two forward facing uh, transducers and a 360 transducer. And that's a guy who isn't really known for electronics. You're going to see a lot of that this year. Um, you know, with this conversation I was talking about with this, uh, this outdoor retailer, um you, know, pro shops. you can say their name yeah. there yeah. right well, yeah. so i'm just i'm just speaking broadly people that are listening on the audio version more people listen to this in the yeah. audio version than the visual so the people are gonna be like whoa yeah Bass pro. what one yeah. yeah retailer just an outdoor retailer that allows me to 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 run you know Lawrence hummingbird and garmin uh and guys it's nothing new guys have been doing that for a while um but uh yes you know um we thought we, I had the idea of just doing a big obnoxious thing with those giant, you know, poles and, and all that. But then as I started thinking about it more and more and more, I'm, I'm very simplistic fisherman. Just give me two forward facing transducers up front and let's go from there. So it's not going to be super obnoxious. It'll be three twelve. That is obnoxious. So three twelves and two forward facing transducers. That's, and nothing, that's that's obnoxious. No, he decided he was gonna do like folding and yeah, I'm only five seven, so I don't need these giant. You but know. he he finally like when I was like, look, dude, we need to know what you need because your boat's getting rigged in a week, yeah. and we gotta get it here. Like, yeah. I need the list. And he, he, when that push came to shove, he was like, never mind. Yeah, I don't I need don't, all that. I wasn't gonna go super obnoxious with it. I, I, yeah, I don't want too much crap up there. But yeah, I mean, seeing that photo of this dude, this southern dude with four twelves up front. I've never seen it before. I mean, just a quad box of pixels is uh is where we're heading in 2024. How about that? <laughs> Would have been a lot more fun if you said I've got NASA working. Uh, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, I thought I th yeah I thought about pulling y'all y'all's legs a little bit. He but, did. Uh, he called. I'll give him credit. He called all the right people to ask them, like, no BS. Like, what do I need? And what is a myth? What is bull? What is yeah. just not necessary? And those are some of the things we want to cover on the YouTube channel. Yeah. It's things like that, you know, yeah. off the, you know, off the water, but on the water that, he'll that people be, want to know. The cool thing about it is now, if someone comes out with a new uh, piece of equipment, new technology, um, he'll be able to run it. And before he couldn't, you know, so yeah. um, when technology matters so much. You know, it's better to be able to run what you, whatever you can. And by the way, when I talk about wish lists or filling a cart, 
it's not like all free. Like you get free, like James Watson, free, free, free. No, you got to work for it. Like you got to work for it more ways than, than, than you would think. So, um, it's that not comment just like sounds this. like you're dealing with trauma from hate online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I will continue to get that, that kind of scrutiny blasted our way. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, in, 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 in a nutshell, in 2024, that's where we are as professional bass fishermen. If you do not have it, you are behind, period. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, hate is going to be something you get no matter what you do. But that's oh, also yeah. why I love about podcasts. Because, I, yeah. like, you know, yeah. like for me, I don't ever get insulted. Like, I've removed myself from it. Because I always, like, think about it. Like, if I sold tires yeah. and, and somebody... I put a post up about tires and somebody said, well, I don't believe you don't know what you're talking about. Those tires suck. I wouldn't take it personally. I'd just be like, yeah. well, the dude doesn't like my tires. Yeah. And that's kind of how I right. look at a podcast. You know what I mean? That yep. You have to yeah. stay sane because you're going to, yep. I mean, this conversation we've had today, there's going to be people that are like, why are you talking about this? Why do you, yeah, it's yeah. going to happen. But, but that's the cool Always. thing about podcasts. They don't yeah, have to we, be for everyone. Exactly. We get these comments all the time, like a, these grown men who don't want me on the podcast and i'm like why are you listening they and they do it every podcast the same ones make the same comment and it's like bro why are you listening like i'm not going anywhere i'm not forcing you to listen to this podcast that involves me like stop listening i will say trait like seven eight years ago when she she still reads a lot of comments but she like someone make her cry like honestly someone make her cry now she's just like how i am just like dude whatever dude you know yeah you, it's just you get her a comment. They yeah. don't pay my bills. Yeah, exactly. Like, dude, really? If your opinion's so strong, start your own podcast, bro. You know, it's like <laughs> people. <laughs> you know, I say like a lot too, and he does too. I think, and people like to point that out. And I want to be like, try to do this yourself. If you put yourself in these shoes and try and have a podcast that, like, we try to keep bars between an hour, an hour, and twenty minutes. You have to cut people off. You have to guide the conversation. You can't just sit around in that situation because if you did, then you won't, wouldn't get anywhere. And they get so mad. And I'm like, why don't you just try to yeah. do this? And you'll understand more that it is not easy. It's not just you sit down and have a normal conversation. Well, if you Except for this one is. This one's but they weird. should all be like this. I try to make them all, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it should be a regular yeah. conversation. But but I, yeah. I think that that if you recorded any conversation, you know what I mean? If somebody just put a recorder down while we were sitting in a coffee shop one day, there'd be you could pick up there's patterns in people's speech. Everybody yeah. says certain yes. things repetitively. That's just right. I mean, it's just how it's it is. Part of it. Yeah. It's it's just a weird world we live in where everybody yeah. feels yeah. that that it's me, me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, the, the length of a podcast, prime example, like you, I know that my podcast would probably do better if I shortened it. But my right. whole theory from the start has been like some Let of the best rip. crap is after an hour of stuff, like people start talking mm -hmm. about stuff and you're like, so I just, my answer to those people are like, oh, it's really long. Well, cool. Just imagine I do two. Watch one on yeah. Wednesday yeah. and then watch it the takes... other one on Friday. Right. Yeah. It takes time too with some people for them to relax yeah. enough to start having those conversations. And then you get that vibe down and then, you know, it's, it's pretty well into it when that vibe, you know, starts happening. So I get that, you know, totally. Well, this one didn't take long. I had fun talking yeah, well, to you guys. I'm going to get one. roasted yeah, in the one. comments. Oh yeah. yeah. Roaster. Roast Light her up. She's a ball eater. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Can I, can I title it? So much trouble. See, here's where yeah. I'm horrible. You guys don't mind. You, yes, right. She, you guys yeah, will yeah. You, Can I put. <laughs> she does that. Yeah. Did she you does. ever see that? Do you remember the guy from the Carolinas that used to make those memes? Um, What's that guy's name? Uh, I can't. The frog guy. The frog guy. He had two like meme accounts and oh, he did oh, yeah, one. I know who you're talking about. Remember that him? guy? Yeah. Get his number. And, uh, he uh, did an uh, took the SNL sketch of the salty balls. Do you remember that sketch? <laughs> and he put me and Becky's face on it. Sweaty balls. Yeah, and it was sweaty uh, balls. It was so bad, but also so funny. And I was just like, oh my god. Hopefully that guy's all right. He yeah. went off. Kane, Kane, Simpson. Kane Simpson fishing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. 
the OG yeah. burner account guy. That guy's yeah. funny. I he was he's so spirit he was so funny. Yeah, I hope yeah. he's doing okay. It's weird because we actually know his name. Like most meme accounts, you have I, no idea who it is, and that's what makes no. it right. an account. Yeah. But but yeah. we all knew who it was. Um, yeah, dude, I also take stuff like that. It's a compliment. You know what I mean? Like you made yeah. You made back oh, yeah. you can make me part of your meme. Shows that you and yeah. Becky right. are making an impact. And like, think about it. Right. You're yeah. Ma- yeah. like in all intents of purposes. And I know you're a big part of this business, but all intents of purposes outside of. And so is Becky of Ike's. There's no right. Both of you guys aren't anywhere without the people you are partnered with. Right. But for all intents of purposes, you're the spouse of the public person. And the fact that right. they're making, y- you know what I mean? It, that's yeah. to yeah. me, that's that a they compliment. you at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I, I used to crack up, dude. That guy had some funny stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I missed well, some of the meme accounts. Yeah, you, most people thought you were most of the meme accounts. <laughs> this is yeah. True. yeah. Dude, <laughs> no, no, honestly, um, I'll never forget. It was like Wilbur or something was telling companies that he tracked the IP and it was me. And I'm like, um, this is news to me. Just asinine yeah. claims. I, I mean, it was yeah. crazy back then. It was crazy. <laughs> People are crazy. I wonder well, how that guy's doing. Who? You know? Who will? No, the Jim Jones guy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I don't, we haven't heard from him in a long time. Yeah. We, don't, we to, never even figured out who he was. Yeah. He used to message me and say sorry. And he would and he would say, I will take this down because they were they were trying to whoever it was, he's in the industry and they were trying yeah. they were going to companies trying to destroy us. Like they wanted a meme account to blackball us. Over a meme a account, Jim Jones, yeah, meme account, like, and yeah. um, and he he would t- he would message me and say, "I will take it down. You just tell me." And I said, "No, dude, do your thing. I don't yeah. care. It's not me. I know it's not me. They Nothing to worry it, about. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to be able to prove anything. It's not so me. Stupid. So, go do your thing, bro. <laughs> Silly times in bass fishing, nineteen yeah. five years ago. Here you are. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, uh, makes, uh, makes for good podcast though, I guess. And yeah, it does. Yeah. It really does. Uh, it does." Hey, Trey, tell Bob Cobb to take yeah. it away, and then I'm going to stop recording so we can talk about some good stuff. What? How do, uh, how do you say you just that? Just tell Bob, Bob Cobb to take it away. Bob, take it away. <laughs> I'm not good at that. No, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. That was terrible. <laughs> uh... Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Because Bob Cobb of the Bassmasters told you to, you hear?